I'm Dr. Trina Hall with Psych Services of the Dallas Police Department. Um, so I've been with Dallas Police Department now for about nine years. Um, I've worked with law enforcement prior, uh, more federal law enforcement and local uh, city uh, law enforcement, LA Sheriff's Department and Bureau of Prisons. I've been seeing the first responder community for approximately nine years with Dallas Police Department. Uh, prior to working here, I worked uh, with the LA Sheriff's Department for a few years, um, and I was also with the Federal Law Enforcement Bureau of Prisons for about four years. Well, I think anytime you do this work, it's going to change just based on the number of incidences and stressors that do come up with first responders. Um, but in terms of just helping people and kind of the general needs of what people need, that hasn't changed over the years. But I do think it, it's, the society has changed. And so because society has changed, um, our approach sometimes has to change as well. The first responder community um, is different from other communities, even other first responder communities, um, simply because of the cumulative stress and the cumulative incidences that you guys are exposed to on a daily basis. And so because of that, there's this constant trauma or there's these constant critical incidences that you guys tend to be um, exposed to on a more regular basis. Well, I think over the years, the stigma has gotten better as it relates to mental health, the stigma of getting help, the stigma of acknowledging even your own mental health and your own mental wellness. Um, it has improved over the years, and I think part of the reason why it's improved is people are more willing to talk about it now. Um, before, there was embarrassment to talk about it. Uh, before, there was that stigma, if I talk about it, that's going to show that I'm weak. Now, I think that narrative has changed, and so because that narrative has changed, I think most, more people are willing and more comfortable um, to share with each other as opposed to you know keeping it their own hidden secret so I think that over the years and I think the more we start to do that the more we start to share the more we talk about it the more we normalize um, I think the better that it will become so it will no longer be stigma to ask for help or to talk about your own mental wellness. I think you can change it in a positive direction, again, by just opening up the dialogue, keeping the narrative going, everyone talking about it. I think if we do that, then it will constantly be a part of the conversation. So it won't just be a conversation when something happens, it's a regular part of wellness. Similar to if you are going to go out and you have high blood pressure issues, you have heart problems, a lot of times when we talk about it, somebody might go get checked. And so I think the more we start talking about it, the more we bring it into the conversation, the more it will be a regular part of the conversation as opposed to one of those special conversations you need to have with someone. I think over the years, the cumulative stressors um, do start to impact if you do not take the preventative measures um, by, you know, talking about things, uh, engaging in your coping strategies, you know, incorporating more uh, appreciation, gratitude. Without doing some of those preventative measures um, over the years, then it does build up and eventually it could lead to burnout. Eventually it could lead to post-traumatic stress. Eventually it could lead to a negative coping strategies. So um, in order to kind of minimize that, I think it is important to make sure that you do participate in those preventative measures 
um, do what you love, uh, what you enjoy to help minimize some of the stressors that you might be exposed to. So um, over the years, there's been rumors that Psych Services Department, that we do fitness for duty evaluations. We do not do any fitness for duty evaluations. We do outsource them out um, because it is a conflict of interest. We see you guys for counseling services, so to do the fitness for duty evaluations, um, that would put you in an uneasy state. So because of that, Psych Services doesn't do a fitness for duty evaluations. Um, also with our counseling, our counseling is confidential. And so with it being confidential, it's very similar to if you were to go outside to talk to any clinician out in the community, we have the same type of confidentiality because our license is to the state of Texas. So because of that, we don't want to have dual duty by doing a fitness for duty evaluation as well. 